Leviticus uh, 13 is where we need to pick up. Father, we thank you for all that you provided to our country as we are here on the eve of Thanksgiving. We thank you for how you have kept us, Lord, from the nations that would seek to harm us. Even as the song says, America, America, God shed his grace on thee. How we need more of that grace, Lord. Lord, as we study leprosy, may we have eyes to see the bigger picture of our own sin. And how without you, that sin was desensitizing us more and more to the convicting voice of your spirit and even our conscience. And was dragging us to a sure destruction. Oh, the love of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God to cleanse us from our iniquities, to forgive us our sins. And through faith in your son to clothe us, clothe us in your righteousness. How we thank you for those things. So Lord, please take our chapters tonight and open them just wonderfully in our hearts to see more of you and your goodness to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Since we're in Leviticus 13, naturally that means you need to turn to Numbers 12. You all knew that, but it's close to it. Numbers 12. Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses. Stephen did that on purpose, payback. Spoke against Moses about the Ethiopian woman that he had married, and the Lord heard it. And so he called, verse 3, Miriam, Aaron, and Moses to the tabernacle there and talked with them. Why weren't you afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And so the anger of the Lord was kindled against him. Verse 9, the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam was leprous. Oops. White as snow. Not in a good way. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said unto Moses, At last, my Lord, I beseech thee, listen to the view of leprosy. Lay not this sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, wherein we have sinned. Let her not be as one dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed when he cometh out of his mother's womb. Moses cried out unto the Lord, Heal her now, O God, I beseech thee. And God would respond to him. Turn also, 2 Kings, chapter 5. 2 Kings, chapter 5. Get into Naaman here. 2 Kings 5, give you a second to get there. Naaman, the captain of the host, the king of Syria, was a great man, his master, with his master, honorable, because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was a mighty man of, le of valor, but, what? He was a leper. Well, long story short, he gets sent to the king of Israel with a note, with a letter saying, heal my servant. I've sent him to you so you may recover from his leprosy. Verse 6, verse 7, it came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter that he rent his clothes, a sign of grief again, and said, Am I God to kill and to make alive that this man doth send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? In other words, I, nobody can do this, only God. And of course, Elisha finds out about it. It's an incredible story, but you have to read it at home. Second Chronicles 6. Second Chronicles 6. Make sure I got the right chapter here. Keep turning that way, it's the ballpark. Second Chronicles 26. Yeah, it's slightly different. Oh, get it right, buddy. Second Chronicles 26. King Isaiah, 16 years old, they made him king, the room of his father, Amaziah. He was powerfully helped. 
did marvelous things. God caused him to prosper, verse 5. As long as he sought the Lord, God caused him to prosper. Dug towers, built weapons of war, did all kinds of really cool things, verse 16. But when he was strong in his heart, he was lifted up to his destruction, for he transgressed against the Lord his God and went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. Now we've learned from Nadab and Abihu, what? You don't do this, right? Azariah the priest went in with him after him, and with him fourscore priests of the Lord that were valiant men, and they withstood Uzziah the king. They said to him, It appertaineth not unto thee, Uzziah, to burn incense unto the Lord, but to the priests, the sons of Aaron, that are consecrated to burn incense. Go out of the sanctuary, for thou hast trespassed, neither shalt it be for thine honor from the Lord. And Uzziah was wroth, and he had a censer in his hand to burn incense, and when he was, while he was wroth with the priests, leprosy even rose up in his forehead before the priests in the house of the Lord, in Jesus' great name. And Azariah, the chief priest, and all the priests looked upon him, and behold, he was leprous in his forehead. They know what it looks like. We'll know that after our chapters. He was leprous in his forehead, and they thrust him out from thence. They became even more bold against him because God had already struck him. They threw him out. Yea, he himself hastened also to get out, because the Lord had smitten him, and Uzziah the king was a leper unto the day of his death. Leprosy was viewed really as a walking death. Leprosy was viewed as really the end of the road for you if you had contracted it. It was viewed, many people saw it as a divine stroke of God against an individual. I'm sort of jumbled in my notes because we're in New Testament, Old Testament, but let me read you a statement here about leprosy. I want to show you a little bit of what we know from modern, quote, modern science, and then we're going to get into our chapters. Somebody said this, McClintock and Strong record, we are told leprosy comes upon a man for seven, ten, or eleven things, for idolatry, profaning the name of God, unchastity, theft, slander, false witness, false judgment, perjury, infringing the borders of a neighbor, devising malicious plans, or creating discord among brothers. So could you imagine if you become a leper, the view that people would have of you? It was almost always viewed as really a divine stroke against an individual, a judgment against a person. And, and of course, when you see in Numbers 12 there, Miriam, who had been backbiting Moses with Aaron, she gets struck with leprosy. Uzziah, who goes in and pretends he's going to be a priest instead of just the king, he gets struck with leprosy. So it was often viewed as if you had leprosy, God was getting you. And obviously there was fear about it would spread, you contaminate others. And so by the time that Christ is ministering there on the earth, you'll find that rabbis would talk about they'd keep at least six foot distance from a leper. As we'll get through here, you'll see lepers were forced to call out unclean and cover themselves unclean, unclean. Some rabbis talked about they would pick up stones and they would pelt lepers with them to keep them a safe, di safe distance. Others would say they refused to buy, I believe the example was eggs. If a leper went by that area of the market, lepers were really just, you're out. And leprosy is a wonderful type of sin. It alienates us from God, sin does, and it comes under his wrath and his judgment. And the more we get into sin, like leprosy, the more we come be, become desensitized. And basically, we start killing ourselves with our behaviors. We become so numb to our sin, we can't feel the conviction of God. So let's take a look at how Jesus handled it before we get into the law here. Matthew 8. I thought we were in the... Just go to Matthew 8. We'll get there. Jesus has taught the sermon... Um, yeah, ser uh, Sermon on the Mount. Went up and gave these things to the people. Came down, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority, not as the scribes. And verse 1, chapter 8, when he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him, and boom... Oh, sorry, behold, there came a leper. So they've heard all this great teaching. And in comes what for any other rabbi or religious leader would be, you know, <laughs> you know, stay away. In comes a leper. And he fell down before Jesus, worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. Now, most would expect him to pick up a rock and start pelting. Jesus, what does he do? put forth his hand, and are you supposed to do that? 
So when he touched him, that would be defiling himself, yes? He put forth his hand, he touched him, saying, I will, or I am willing, be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. There are theologians that argue, so did he touch him before he was healed or after he was healed? Did he defile himself? Was he clean? I'm just telling you what's out there. For the, for the antagonist to Jesus, I am willing. As he reaches out his hands, they're all going, <gasps> be thou clean. The guy's healed and they go, oh. <laughs> That's our king. And Jesus said to him, see that you tell no man. But go your way, look at this, show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Not many people showed up healed from leprosy. And so when this guy would show up healed from leprosy, it would wake up the priesthood. God's moving. So a couple quick slides, and then we'll get into our chapter, which we will do our best to pound through tonight. Uh... Drop the lights here if you would, guys, so they can, or ladies, so they can read what we have. Uh, leprosy, this is coming from um, the website at the bottom there. You can get it later if you need it. But listen to this. Leprosy is caused by the bacterium, mycobacterium leprae. It is not very contagious, according to these guys. Obviously, there's, there's for a long time, no one knew how it was, it was spread. Now they have some ideas and some theories. But with their understanding, when we go through Leviticus, see how God prevented by the laws he gave them spread of this. It has a long incubation period, which makes it hard to know when or where someone caught the disease. Children are more likely than adults to get the disease. It has two common forms, tuberculoid and leprosomatos. Sorry, it's hard to see it. Both forms produce sores on the skin. However, the second form is the most severe. It causes large lumps and bumps, nodules. Common in many countries worldwide, temperate, tropical, subtropical climates, about 100 cases per year are diagnosed in the United States. Yeah, that's what it is. Oh, a lot of them come from armadillo. We'll get into that later. Effective medications do exist, so isolating people with this disease in leper colonies is not needed. There are drug-resistant strains, however. Symptoms include skin lesions that are lighter than your normal skin color. Everybody got that? Remember that for our text. Lesions that have decreased sensation to touch, heat, or pain. And that's how you begin to damage your appendages, because you can't feel it. Just like as we get more and more in sin, we damage our sensitivity to God and our convictions get more and more dampened and pretty soon we're destroying ourselves. Lesions that do not heal after several weeks, two months. Note that as the priest keeps closing them up for seven days. Okay? Includes muscle weakness, numbness, other things. This was interesting. The mechanism of transmission of leprosy is prolonged close contact which is when we'll see these rules, what God was trying to protect them from. And now their, fear, their, their theory is by nasal droplet or transmission by nasal droplet. So if you came in contact, the first thing you'd want to do is wash. In addition to humans, leprosy has been observed in the nine banded armadillo, which has recently brought, been confirmed are among the primary sources of new cases of leprosy in the Americas, three species of primates. The entry route of this bacteria into the human body is also not definitively known. Not exactly sure, even in the modern times, how this thing moves. Okay, which would explain again why God gave the rules that he did. The skin and upper respiratory tract are most likely. Some feel it might even be breathed in. Okay. Although the mode of transmission of Hansen's disease, which is another name for it, remains uncertain, even till this modern time from Wikipedia, most investigators think that it is usually spread from person to person in respiratory droplets. So we'll keep that in mind as we look at our text. Here are some samples coming from the website below there. See the hand on the bottom right. Here are some more samples. Note the feet on the top right. That's like a living death, isn't it? Note the loss of appendages there. Prevention at the bottom here from this website. Prevention consists of avoiding close physical contact with untreated people. People on long-term medication become non-infectious. They don't transmit that cause of the disease after time. We'll get to that later. Okay, so let's work with that for a little bit. Let's go to Leviticus 13. Leviticus 13. 
And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, When a man shall have in his skin or the skin of his flesh a rising, a scab, or a bright spot. Remember, it's lighter than the usual skin color. When you observe this, and it be in the skin of his flesh, like the plague of leprosy. That's what it looks like. Then shall he be brought unto Aaron the priest, or unto one of his sons the priest. Someone else said, leprosy is the most terrible of all disorders to which the body of man is subject. In this case, there was no disease, or, yeah, there's no disease in which hope of recovery is so nearly extinguished at the time this commentary is written before they started using these antibiotics. It reduces the patient to a mutilated cripple with dulled or obliterated senses and deformities and keeps going until it hits vital areas. It's, this was scary for them. The priest shall look on the plague in the skin of the flesh. And when the hair in the plague is turned white, for those who've been to Israel, what is the most likely color of the hair on the body going to be? Blonde? Black. Middle Eastern. If it's turned white, something's going on. And the plague be in sight deeper than the skin of his flesh. It is a plague of leprosy. And the priest shall look on him and pronounce him unclean. Now there can be a variety of other skin afflictions that might fall under this as well. But with time, many of them would clear up. And we'll see that as we look at this. If the bright spot be white in the skin of his flesh... And in sight be not deeper than the skin. You'll hear that over and over, the depth. And the hair thereof be not turned white. Then the priest shall shut him up that hath the plague seven days. Why? Because it's slow developing, as we saw here in the modern studies. So you've got to give it some time to make sure. Well, why not let him go back in the camp? Because if it is leprosy, what don't you want him to do? In infect everybody else, okay? So God is trying to protect the rest of the camp. Shut him up for seven days, and the priest shall look on him the seventh day. And behold, if the plague be in his sight, if it be out of stay, and the plague spread not in the skin, then the priest shall shut him up seven days more. And the priest shall look on him again the seventh day, and behold, if the plague be somewhat dark, faded, and the plague spread not in the skin, the priest shall pronounce him clean, it is but a scab. And he shall wash his clothes and be clean. There's that washing again. But if the scab spread much abroad in the skin, after that he hath been seen of the priest for his cleansing, he shall be seen of the priest again. And if the priest see that, behold, the scab spreadeth in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a leprosy. When the plague of leprosy is in a man, then shall he be brought unto the, the priest, and the priest shall see him, and behold, if the rising be white in the skin, and have turned the hair white, there it is again, and there be quick raw flesh in the rising, the idea is ulcerated patches of skin. By the way, uh, according to the 1880s, they said the bright white leprosy is the most malignant, most inveterate of all the varieties of the disease that exhibits a glossy white spreading scales upon an elevated base, and then you'd see this raw flesh. The rising be white in the skin, have turned of hair white, and there be quick raw flesh in the rising. It is an old leprosy in the skin of his flesh, and the priest shall pronounce him unclean, and shall not shut him up, for he is unclean. And if a leprosy break out abroad in the skin, and the leprosy cover all the skin of him that hath the plague from his head even to his foot, wheresoever the priest looketh, then the priest shall consider, and behold, if the leprosy have covered all his flesh, he shall pronounce him clean that hath the plague. It is all turned white. He is clean. And the idea is that this, this whole manner of disease has come out to a dead white scurf or basically a crusty, almost like a dandruff. And so the, basically it's run its course and it's done. Okay. I knew you wanted to get here tonight for this, didn't you? So basically it's run its course and it's turned white and it's essentially scruffing or falling off. He's clean. But if he's got that and there's still raw flesh, when raw flesh appears in him, he shall be unclean. It's continuing. And the priest shall see the raw flesh and pronounce to him to, or him to be unclean, for the raw flesh is unclean. It is a leprosy. Or if the raw, now remember, we're still guessing how this is exactly transmitted. They think it's by mucal droplets from the nose. 
And that's with all of our technology. They had no idea how it was spread. And so God's just saying, isolate them. And with the fact that they don't have any real antibiotics to combat this or any other measures to take, God is giving them the most effective means to keep this plague from spreading to everybody else. You know, it's interesting, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, it says, if any man eat with a brother or a sister who's caught up in idolatry, fornication, and other things, if, don't even eat with them, don't even hang out with them. You know what? Push them outside of the body, set them out that they might repent and turn from the fact that they've compromised and backslid. It's interesting, with leprosy, you don't want this to come in and contaminate the rest of the camp. 1 Corinthians 5 there, Paul's dealing with the Corinthians, and he said, look, when I wrote to you not to keep fellowship with you know, fornicators and idolaters and everything else, I didn't mean the lost people in the world. You'd have to leave the planet. Paraphrasing. But if anyone says they're a brother and they're caught up in this stuff, it's going to be like a leprosy. You start listening to some brother or sisters explaining you why it's okay to completely backslide, it's going to impact your walk. Keep them out of the camp. Don't even eat with them. Interesting parallel. So in this case, don't let this thing contaminate the rest of the people. It's a leprosy. He's unclean. That's it. Verse 16, or if the raw flesh turn again, be changed into white. Well, he shall come unto the priest, and the priest shall see him, and behold, if the plague be turned into white, then the priest shall pronounce him clean. Again, it's run its course, it's done its thing. He that hath the plague, he is clean. The flesh also, in which even in the skin thereof was a boil, and it is healed. I've had a boil, and it was not fun. I had one boil from getting MRSA down at Hurricane Katrina. We cleaned this house that the sewer decided to come back up into the house. <laughs> and man, I'd roll over on that thing at night and it would wake me up with one boil. And I'd already taught the book of Job. And I wish I could go back and teach it again. Job was covered from head to toe in boils. He was grabbing pot shards and digging out the pus. He's covered in them. And I was whining over one boil. Just extra credit there in case you know. It's a boil. It's clean. It's healed. Verse 18. And in the place of the boil, if there be a white rising or a bright spot, remember we read, that's a bad sign, white or somewhat reddish, and it be showed to the priest, and if when the priest seeth it, behold, it be in sight lower than the skin, that keeps coming up, and the hair thereof be turned white, the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a plague of leprosy, broken out of the boils. It's gotten contaminated. But if the priest... Look on, oh, by the way, name another famous character in the Bible who received leprosy for his sin. Works with a prophet. Oh yeah, that guy, that guy, the guy, the guy who took a couple of talents of silver and some changes of clothes, that guy. No, not Elijah, worked with Elisha. His name was? Gehazi, Gehazi, there you go. Go Tom. 2 Kings 5, you can go see that. So again, a stroke of often divine judgment. If the priest look on it and there be no white hairs therein, and if it be not lower than the skin, but be somewhat dark, then the priest shall shut him up seven days again, because this thing's slow moving. And if it spread much abroad in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a plague. But if the bright spot stay in his place and spread not, it is a burning boil, and the priest shall pronounce him clean. Boils healed up, scabs gone. Or if there be any flesh in the skin whereof there is a hot burning, and the quick flesh that burneth have a white bright spot, somewhat reddish or white, then the priest shall look upon it, and behold, if the hair and the bright spot be turned white, and if it be in sight deeper, here it is again, than the skin, it is a leprosy broken out of the burning. Wherefore the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is the plague of leprosy. Do you understand now why the priest could look at Uzziah's forehead and go, leprosy? Got it? They know what they're looking for. But if the priest look on it, verse 26, and behold, there be no white hair in the bright spot, and it be no lower than the other skin, but it be somewhat dark, then the priest shall shut him up some seven days, and the priest shall look upon him the seventh day, and if it be spread much abroad in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean, it is the plague of leprosy. And if the bright spot stay in his place, and spread not in the skin, but it be somewhat dark, it is a rising of the burning, and the priest shall pronounce him clean, for it is an inflammation of the burning. 
If a man or a woman have a plague upon the head or upon the beard, then the priest shall see the plague, and behold, if it be a man or a woman have a plague in the head or on the beard, Sorry, that just caught my attention. I think that's just for the men. But Then the priest shall see the plague. I'm having fun, just trying to keep you with me. And behold, if it be in the sight deeper than the skin, and there be, this is different, a yellow thin hair. They say the hairs on parts affected are dull, dry, and colorless, exceedingly brittle, easily extracted, and colored with a grayish-white dust in the 1800s those who dealt with lepers. If there be a yellow thin hair, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean as a dry skull or scale, even a leprosy in the head or beard. And if the priest look on the plague of the skull, and behold, it be not in sight deeper than the skin, that there is no black hair in it, then the priest shall shut him up that hath the plague of the skull seven days. And in the seventh day, the priest shall look on the plague, and behold, if the skull spread not, and if there be in it no yellow hair, and the skull be not in sight deeper than the skin, he shall be shaven. But the skull shall not he shave. And the priest shall shut him up that hath the skull seven days more. And in the seventh day the priest shall look upon the skull, and behold, if the skull be not spread in the skin, nor be deeper in sight than the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him clean. And he shall wash his clothes, there that is again, and be clean. But if the skull spread much in the skin after his cleansing, then the priest shall look on him, and behold, if the skull be spread in the skin, the priest shall not seek for the yellow hair, he is unclean. But if the skull be in his sight at a stay, and that there is a black hair grown up therein, the skull is healed, he is clean, and the priest shall pronounce him clean. If a man also or a woman hath in the skin of their flesh bright spots, even white bright spots, and the priest shall look, and behold, if the bright spots in the skin of their flesh be darkish white, it is a freckled spot that groweth in the skin, he is clean. And the man whose hair is fallen off his head, he is bald. He made sure they knew, yet he is clean. He that hath his hair fallen from off the part of his head towards his face, he is forehead bald. <laughs> Listen, God's making sure these guys don't get falsely profiled here, all right? So, yet he is clean. And if there be in the bald head or the bald forehead a white reddish sore, as a leprosy sprung up in his bald head or his bald forehead. I'm sorry, I'm thinking Gorbachev. I'm just, if you're not old enough to know what that is, I'm, I don't mean to give you a bad visual there. Just, there's all, was that Europe? What is that? But anyway, then the priest shall look upon it. And behold, if the rising of the sore be white reddish in his bald head or in his bald forehead, as the leprosy appeareth in the skin of the flesh, he is a leprous man, he is unclean. You know, it's interesting, they didn't really, they didn't know how leprosy was spread. Science is now taking its best guess based on some evidence of what they found, how it spread through, again, mucus, secretions, and touch, some other things. But leprosy, again, a picture of sin. When Adam and Eve disobeyed the one commandment of God, every human being born from them are born sinners. We call it original sin. And how exactly that's transmitted, you know, we just know the Lord's told us that this is happening and it's obvious we prove it by lying and say, you know, you're about to be around family. Watch the little one or two year old steal and no one taught them. You know, they're in there stealing the candy. They're in there with their fingers in the cake and everything else during Thanksgiving. And no, nobody said, now when we get to grandma's house, make sure you make a beeline for that little like crystal dish with the candy. Get as many as you can, shove them in your pocket and go, mm, in your mouth, and then run in the kitchen, get your fingers in this and then steal the soda. And they do it all on their own. They prove they're sinners. So interesting, again, this type of leprosy showing a type of sin. We really don't know how it's communicated, but we do know that when Adam and Eve fell, every human being from those two have fallen with them, and God would break that through the virgin birth of his son, that he was born of a woman, the seed of the woman, yet also of the working of God's Holy Spirit. So when Gabriel told her that which you have conceived will be God, he will be Emmanuel, God with us. He will be holy. That's why Jesus had to be born of 
a virgin because he's got to have human flesh so he can shed literal blood and die a physical death to satisfy the wrath and the judgment of God's law. But he has to be fully God so he's born without his own original sin so he can live a sinless life so he can be our substitute. So again, just interesting parallels here with, we don't, you know, we have some ideas now, but interesting the picture it gives. Well, verse 46, all the days wherein the plague shall be in him, he shall be defiled. Oh, I'm sorry. Verse 44, he is a leprous man, he's unclean. The priest shall pronounce him utterly unclean. The plague is in his head. Verse 45, and the leper in whom the plague is, here's what they must do, his clothes shall be rent, token of humility, Humiliation, grief, despair. It was often, again, regarded as a divine stroke against someone or infliction. Clothes rent, head bare. He shall put a covering upon his upper lip. Some feel covering actually over his face. And that's interesting because if that's here under the nose, it would be absorbing that mucal stuff. Interesting. Maybe that's more effective than we know. And he has to go about crying, unclean, unclean. You're basically doomed. And what is sin doing to us in the presence of a holy God? We're doomed without Jesus. And the more it eats away at you, the more you realize, the older you get, just how unclean, unclean you've lived. Remember when they caught the woman in the very act of adultery and they dragged her out to Jesus in John chapter 8? And they're like, do we stone her? Do we stone her? And if he says, don't stone her, they're going to report him to the Jewish authorities for failing to keep the law. If he says stone her, they're going to report him to the Roman authorities for usurping Rome's authority over them and doing the death sentence. So they thought they had him. And what is he doing? He's down there in the ground, writing in the dust with his fingers. And everybody wants to know what? What was he writing? Was he writing the names of the guys who brought him and the sins that they did? You know, he's writing in the dust. And finally, Stands up, says, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. Goes back down to writing. What happened? They all began to leave from the oldest to the youngest. Gee, why? Because the older you get, the more you know without Jesus. Man, I'm unclean, I'm unclean. I'll tell you, some of the most saddening places to be in ministry is sitting by the bedside of an unbeliever who's on their deathbed. Trying to reach out to him, trying to share with him. And so often you hear the regret. You hear, the, you hear the sadness, yeah. I mean, you really hear all the things that they have done wrong, and it's, it's coming back to them. The strange relationships, the broken families, the, it's, it's really a very sobering place to be, and yet, as you're trying to share Christ with them, sometimes they're just, but they're so empty. Sin really is like leprosy, man. It just takes you down over time until it just hits you in a vital place. Only Jesus can heal us, just as we see in the case of these lepers. Only Jesus, again, bringing them healing. Only God can bring the healing of our sin. He has to cry unclean, unclean. All the days wherein, verse 46, the plague shall be in him, he shall be defiled. He is unclean, he shall dwell alone. In some cultures, they would have houses together, colonies, separate areas. They would put eventually in the synagogue separate sections where lepers could come here, but they had to be separate from the people. It was a life of separation. Where will sin take you without Jesus? To death, then to the judgment of God. For those not found in the book of life where we enter through faith in Jesus Christ, they are cast into the lake of fire where they are separated from God. I've actually talked to people saying, well, if that's what God's going to do, I don't think I want to be with him. Oh. oh, wow, are you deceived? The wages of sin is death. But then comes the judgment. And when the judgment comes, the books are opened. Anyone not found in the book of life is cast into the lake of fire. And Revelation 20 says, this is the second death. Where they're separated from God. Well, I'd rather be in hell where there's a party. There's no party. It's not a reunion. It's a sobering thing. That's why we need to be forgiven through Christ. Well, verse 47, this disease can also get into garments, or at least it can fester. The garment also where the plague of leprosy is in, whether it be a woolen garment or a linen garment, whether it be in the warp or in the woof of a linen or a woolen. Now, if you don't know what warp and woof are, how many have ever seen like a loom? Think of the little thing of the loom, yes? Through the loom, do you have that at least? <laughs> 
the guys in the grapes. The, the, the strings going this way, for lack of a better description, that is the warp, okay? The woof is the strings that go horizontally across that they lock in and make the level of the weave. So it's talking about the different parts of the weave. Clothing was very time consuming to make and very expensive. It was not like today where you get a sale and you buy pants for two bucks. And so if it's found in a garment, whether it's in the warp or in the woof of linen or woolen in any skin or in anything made of skin, a hide, if the plague be greenish or reddish in the garment, you'd think, I'll just shout it out. They don't have that. They don't have pre-spot. I'll just do a steam load. They don't have that. Or in the skin, or either in the warp, or in the woof, or in anything of the skin, as a plague of leprosy. And it shall be showed unto the priest. And the priest shall look upon the plague, and shut it up that hath the plague seven days. And he shall look on the plague on the seventh day, and if the plague be spread in the garment, either in a warp, or in a woof, or in a skin of an animal, or in any work that is made of skin, the plague is a fretting leprosy. I'll get to that in a minute. It is unclean. He shall therefore burn it. You know... Uh, it's well known that certain infectious diseases such as scarlet fever, measles, and other things can be carried by clothing. We know that now. God protected them then. Burn it. Get rid of it. He shall burn that garment. Whether warp or wolf and a woolen or in a linen or anything of skin wherein the plague is, where it is a fretting, that is a pricking, pain or irritating, it's a, move, it's a fretting, digging in leprosy, it shall be burnt in the fire. And if the priest look and behold, the plague be not spread in the garment, either in the warp or in the wolf or in anything of skin, then the priest shall command that they wash the thing wherein the plague is, and he shall shut it up seven days more. And the priest shall look on the plague after that it is washed, and behold, if the plague have not changed his color, and the plague be not spread, it is unclean. And thou shalt burn it in the fire. It is fret inward. It's boring or eating inward, lepers decay, whether it be bare within or without. And if the priest look and behold, the plague be somewhat dark after the washing of it, then he shall rend it out of the garment, tear it out. I know what you're thinking. Why not just get a new garment? Because, again, it's expensive and time consuming. Rip the piece out and patch it. Or out of the skin or out of the warp or out of the woof. By the way, what are their tents made out of? Skins or woven, woven uh, woolen, fab, you know, goat's hair and other things. So it could also show up in the tent. Could show up in other things. So this is basically the rule for either clothing or dwelling. We're going to get into houses in a minute. And if it appears still in the garment, either in the warp or in the wolf or in anything of skin, it is a spreading plague. Thou shalt burn that wherein the plague is with fire. Again, what a type of sin to leprosy, to final judgment. In the garment, either warp or wolf. Now listen, <laughs> Thanksgiving. They're your families, right? And they're just, you know, let's have the Christian pray. Go ahead, Christian, pray for us. And you say, man, he's going to rip out your warp and wolf and burn you if you don't shape up and repent. <laughs> My what? you got leprosy, man. What are you talking about? Let's try it. Maybe it would be a different witnessing tool for you. See how it goes. <laughs> the garment, either the warp or the wolf or whatever thing it be of skin, which thou shalt wash, if the plague be departed from them, then it should be washed a second time. And again, we discovered last week how hand washing was, you know, revolutionary in 1860 or 49 or whatever it was. And then the doctors refused to listen after that and said, you can't tell us to wash your hands. And they ignored it for a while. But anyway, that was last week. If you missed it, grab the tape. If they don't have tapes, try a CD. <laughs> Woolen or linen, either in warp or woof or anything of skins, to pronounce it clean or to pronounce it unclean. Chapter 14. And... The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, and by the way, these two chapters really tie together, which is why we kept them as a block for this week, because that was easier in stopping halfway through. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, This shall be the law of the leper in the day of his cleansing. So we have something that they really view as incurable, and yet God puts in his law a provision for when he cures it. Elisha would pronounce name and clean by going and dipping in the Jordan seven times through the work of God. Moses would put his hand in, and Moses was basically saying, well, who am I? Who are you? How do I know they will receive you? Who do I tell them you are? What if they don't believe me? And finally God says, then put your hand in. He pulls it out in his lepers. Whoa, that got his attention. Put it back in right away. 
Oh, thank God. Okay, I'll go. There's a pattern here. Naaman, the others healed by Jesus, Miriam being released from it. You really do see divine activity. So God sets up chapter 14 here so that when he sends his son, and his son says, I'm willing, be thou clean. And then he says, go show yourself to the priest and give the offering for the healing from leprosy. When these guys begin to show up, you know, the 10 lepers came to Jesus, he healed them. Which one came back? When it was a Samaritan. Where are the other nine? Kept telling him, go show yourself to the priests. So here the priests are at the time that Daniel chapter 9 told him somewhere around this time, Messiah is going to come in, right? Zechariah chapter 9 says he's going to ride it on a donkey. Isaiah 35 says he's going to open the eyes of the blind, the ears of the deaf, and the lame will walk. And all the other scriptures, he's going to be born in Bethlehem, yet he'll be of a Nazarene. I'll call my son out of Egypt. All these other prophecies given of the Messiah, they're in the time period when it should be happening. And suddenly all these people start showing up at the temple wanting to proclaim they've been healed from their leprosy. What happened? Jesus healed me. Basically, God stuck this into his law as a witness against the priesthood. When the first, start of the first of these lepers started showing up healed from Jesus, they're like, wait a minute, there's a chapter for that. Hey, Levi, we got a, a healed leper here, man. We're, that's in, it's chapter 14. Oh, all right. All right, what do we got to do? We gotta, uh, we, uh, sorry, we haven't done this like ever. We gotta, uh, uh, uh. And I wonder if the leper said to him, say that again slowly. We haven't done this like ever. Yeah, but Jesus is doing it all over the place. Yeah, so? Vroom. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, This shall be the law of the leper in the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought unto the priest. The priest shall go forth out of the camp. Why out of the camp? In case he's not really healed, so he doesn't come in and contaminate everybody else. Priest shall go forth out of the camp. Interesting, by the way, how the priests were at risk of defilement from this thing. There's an interesting parallel for ministry. The priest shall look and behold, if the plague of leprosy be healed. Wow. We got six minutes and 57 verses. <laughs> Auctioneering Bible said, hand the priest and the healer, five, healed, right? Was that tongues? <laughs> Let's see here. Come on, we gotta have some fun. It's a holiday weekend. Um, boy, oh boy. Let's see how far we can get here. We get to the house. Yeah, we'll do a few of those. We'll do about half. Well, there we go here. In the Day of Atonement. Andy's back there trying to survive with the kids tonight because it's not a wanna. Hmm. Well, if Andy Reid was here, he'd punt. <laughs> We're going to get a few emails about this one. Joel, take that out of the tape, will you? <laughs> now we can't do it. We can't do it. We're going to have to. Can you imagine going, oh, we can't finish leprosy? Come on. We've been waiting all week for this. No, we're going to have to get this next time. Let's, uh, let's stand and pray. Show you the pictures of house leprosy next time. So, <laughs> Father, uh, we, are, we are so grateful to you that you love us. In chapter 14, you knew that you would send your son, that he would heal the lepers, open the eyes of the blind, the ears of the deaf. He would show forth his credentials by the divine power of God working through him. Nicodemus said that just as much. We know you are a teacher come from God. No man can do the miracles you're doing except God be with him. And then you hit Nicodemus with except a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. 
So we do thank you, Lord. Not only did you put in chapter 14 how lepers might be cleansed, but you gave us 66 books that talk about how sinners can be forgiven. Lives can be healed, that the locust is eaten, the worm is destroyed through our sin and our foolishness and our rebellion. Homes can be restored, marriages can be reunited. Children can be no longer estranged from parents. Because of the healing power of Jesus, and so on the eve of Thanksgiving, we thank you for so loving this world that you gave your only begotten Son. Once again, that whomsoever believeth upon him by faith will not perish into that ultimate separation outside of the camp, but will receive as a gift everlasting life. That we can put off the old man, the leprous, dead old man, and by the grace of God through the Holy Spirit, as we turn from our sin and we embrace your Son, we can put on the new man through the power of the Holy Spirit. So please anoint these people for ministry over this weekend that comes. Bless them, Lord. Put a word in their mouth for even the strongest of antagonists to the truth, that they would do business with you directly. It would be as though you were speaking to the people that talk to them, and they would simply be the vessel so they can go home rejoicing that you spread seed among their family. Thank you for these things, Lord. Fill them afresh with your Holy Spirit. Pour out upon us, we pray, in Jesus' great name. Amen. God bless you all. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>